Yeah, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, uh, theologist again. Just want to continue these talks on theological abuse and how the Jehovah Witness cart people um, practice a passive form and sometimes an aggressive form of uh, theological abuse. Theological abuse is when you take a truth and make it a lie and try and convince a person that the lie is now the new truth. I want to say this again. Theological abuse in an audible form is when you take a truth, make it into a lie, and then try and convince listeners that the lie is the truth. That's theological abuse. Now we'll go to the cart. We're going to go with Robert, who is a gentleman of profound kind, and um, we'll see what happens here in this clip. This is one of Robert's older videos. I have his permission to use it. Thank you, Robert. And I do hope you subscribe to his channel, of which I'll leave a link after this. But let's run through this and see how Robert um, goes with this Jehovah Witness. Well, if you'd be willing to discuss Revelation chapter 4, verse 9, sir. I've read something in one of your books. This is the book I've read, The Finished Mystery. Um, is it possible to look at the verse, Revelation 4, verse 9, in your Bible, sir? sir? Willing to look at the Bible? Now, I just want to stop it there and remind you that there is, when it comes to filming, at least in Australia or Canada, I'm not sure about England, but if you're not using the film for commercial use and you're using it for this kind of thing and it's not monetarily related to money, um, it's legal. There's no expectation of privacy in public um, relative to media as far as I know, but you've got to check with your local people. Now, this man's playing the silent card, which is theological abuse, because he's put himself in the public, he's put himself at the mercy of the public as a theological representative. Now, I want to make this clear. Or, if he doesn't want to be a theological representative, then he's pushing solely sitting there pushing watchtower propaganda. That's all he's doing. He's no good to the public. If he can't communicate theologically, he's not backing up what the scriptures have instructed him to do when he goes into the public. And therefore, the only thing he can do is go into theological abuse. You're not willing to look at the Bible? Not with you. Not, not with me? You're, you're Robert, not. That's right, sir, yes. I beg your pardon, sir? Could you move on? Um, I'm in a public place, sir, and you're not a policeman with the authority to move um, me on. If you don't move on, I shall ask my wife. I shall ask, if you don't move on now, I shall ask my wife to get in touch with the police. Um, now, we know that the Jehovah Witnesses aren't advocates of the police. Um, they don't salute the flag, they don't sing the national anthem. They don't work in conjunction with the government. They put their religion before constitutional requirements to any other given normal person of the public, particularly here in Australia. We had an incident down in the local park on Anzac Day. Um, two Jehovah Witnesses, conscientious objectors, the silly fools, set their card up in the middle of the Anzac Day family afternoon barbecue. And they soon legged it when they realised that people... Um, were concerned that they were conscientious objectors. It was very offensive to the Anzacs. Now, this man thinks he's got the authority to move Robert on because it doesn't suit him to have a theological discussion. Well, no, he needs to move on. He needs to get out of the public if he's not going to do what he's there for to do. Can you see what I'm saying? What's the point of the man being there if he's not going to have a theological debate? I'm just asking you a question about the Bible, sir. I'm, I'm not attacking you with your own literature. You're also filming. Turn that off. Turn that off. A, this is a public place, sir. All right, I'll, I'll read it to myself. This is the book, The Finished Mystery. And um, I tried to get the man to look at the book, The Finished Mystery. There's Robert there. Revelation chapter 4, verse 9. And I'll read from page 102. Now, Robert's had to turn and minister to himself. Can you believe, can you just see how pathetic these Jehovah Witnesses are? Now, I know this is an old man and, 
you know, I can appreciate all that, but why, sir, put yourself in a position that you're unable to navigate? He's just sitting there pushing Watchtower propaganda. Now, the gentleman does intervene here. Whose number? I, I beg your pardon, sir? Chapter 4, verse 9. Chapter 4, verse 9. Is it possible just to see it in your book? No, it's chapter 7, verse 9 here. I'm a little bit nervous. I made a mistake, sir. Chapter 7, verse 9. Is it, do me a big favour. Could I just look at chapter 7, verse 9 in your Bible that you've got in your hand? I beg your pardon, sir? No, you're not willing to do that. Look at the Bible. Now, now this guy. Look, can you see? Can you see how destructive the Jehovah Witnesses are, and how ill-equipped they are theologically um, in a public place? This man shouldn't be out there. He shouldn't be out there putting himself in a position that he's unable to handle. Why are the elders of these organisations sending these people out there? Now, what the problem with it is? This man's going to go into a flurry of, oh, you know, panic. And all he's got is a sensible, well-educated, well-mannered man asking him questions about his own beliefs, which he cannot manage. It's disgraceful, really. They're the new, these people are a nuisance in the community. You're, you're a witness of Jehovah. I mean, JW.org, official web nights, website of Jehovah's Witnesses. Surely you're a witness of Jehovah. All right, I'll just finish this. It's Revelation 7, verse 9. Now, Robert's going to wind up here, and this is as far as he could get with this very, very um, untheological, able man. ...crowd which no one can number, and yet the Jehovah's Witnesses number the great crowd. And this book, The Finished Mystery, was the current truth, the current light, when Jesus supposedly chose the Watchtower Society in 1919. Why would Jehovah's Witness choose a, a society, sir, which has so many faults and errors? Okay, sir, well, thank you for your time. I'll pop on my way. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. And Robert leaves. Now, you couldn't say that Robert was a nuisance, could you, in that instance? No, you couldn't. Um, how long have I been running for? Seven minutes. We'll do another one while I'm here. But just let me say, that gentleman was practicing theological abuse. Okay, he was sitting there minding his own business. He was sitting there not troubling anybody. But he is out there with a, with a theological message. Or he's just sitting there like a newspaper bloke trying to give away pamphlets for an organisation that's regarded to be a cult. Now, if you plump yourself out there like that, as far as the scripture's concerned, and that's what they want to play, you've got to evangelise. If you're not prepared to do that, put a sign on the front of yourself saying, I'm giving away propaganda, I'm not here to talk about the Bible. Okay, let's see how we go this time with Robert. Hello, sir. Uh, How are no you? Way, no, 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 we're talking. fine. Thank Go you very away. much. Go away, please. You're in a public place. I know, but you're taking. You can use in the camera. Thank you yes. very much. No, I just away. wanted to ask you about no, 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 the fact no, that it no. says Jehovah is the creator. No, no. In Isaiah. That's right. I'm going to find a policeman. In, a, in Isaiah chapter me. 40. I'm going to find a policeman, ma'am, but I want yes. to ask you about the Bible. No, I'm going to Isaiah find chapter 40. Can I just ask you, please, to go away? But. Can I ask you please to go away? What sort of Christian representative is this person? He's got no defence of anything at all, except to say, can you please go away? What did Robert do that they didn't like? Robert had manners, Robert has educa theological education, but these people just can't manage that. But aren't you here to help people understand the Bible? We are, but we're not here to be filmed doing is that because you can't answer these Bible questions? You see, you believe that Jehovah and Jesus, who is an angel, created the heavens and the earth. But Genesis 1 1, sir, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
And, and that's what my concern is, sir. If, if the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, then... How can you tell someone to go away that's come up to you to ask you a theological question? That's theological abuse on the part of the Jehovah Witnesses. They are not doing what they're out there to do. If I worked in my local council and I saw that, I'd go down there and I'd ask, look, excuse me, I know you're on the streets, you're giving away the information of your organisation, but I've got footage that you don't aren't willing to answer Bible questions. Well, why are you actually out here? What are you doing out here? What are these people, I'm going to ask you now, viewers, what are these Jehovah Witness people trying to do in our communities? I'll tell you what it seems like. It seems like they're just fishing around for the vulnerable and the needy, to me. Look. Okay, sir, but... um. I'm just shocked that you don't want to discuss the Bible. I thought that's what Jehovah's Witnesses were about. I thought you were Bible people. But okay, sir, I'll do as you wish. So there you can see again how rude, right, how theologically abusive these people are. Look, somebody comment, am I right? Is this theological abuse or what? It's theological abuse on the part of the representatives of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Because whether Robert's filming or not, they've still got the same attitude. Okay, let's go with Robert again on this one, see what happens. Excuse me, Hi. the Watchtower Society, I believe, claims that Jesus rose as an angel, um, doesn't I it? Think, is, it, is it Robert, is it? Yes. Yeah, all right, Robert. I think we've been told already this morning that we'd like to, just to have a peaceful... Um, stand I'm here, just asking so a question. Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus I rose think, as an angel? I think you know the answer because we've been shown that in your study. All right, so we're going to guard our trolley now. We want okay, so there again you can see they're not going to engage a conversation. They're beat before they start. So what are they out there for? What are these people doing in our community? I want to know. What are these people... That's not my community, but I got them down the street here. What are they doing in our communities? They're not prepared to negotiate the Bible at all. Look. Guarded? I'm not anywhere near your trolley, Mark. We appreciate, Mark. From you. We appreciate if you can but leave us yeah. alone. You appreciate me, but doesn't, okay. doesn't Peter tell Thank you to you. give to an answer to everyone who asks of you? First Peter 3.15. Um, all I wanted to say was that in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4, Mom. Do you want to turn the camera off and turn your video off or we'll have to call the police? And You'll have to call the police. Yes, yes. I'm just, I, I just want to, I'll just leave, but I just want to say Hebrews 1 and 4 says Jesus is so much better than the angels. We're not going to argue. Jesus is so much better than the angels. We're not going to argue. Where does an argument come in to theologically engaging the Bible. They've threatened to call the police. Look, viewers, honestly, is this theological abuse or am I kidding myself? To me, it is, because they shouldn't be out there if they're not prepared to debate their beliefs. No, I don't want to make you go. I'll, I'll pop on my way. I'll leave you. How embarrassing. How embarrassing, how pathetic. Watchtower. Watchtower, if that's the best you can do with your people, and please subscribe to Robert's channel. Here it is here. Proclaiming Christ, the Christian comedy channel. Now let me just get back out here. Whoa. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, gosh. The Israeli Institute of Biblical Studies, which I'm not sure many of you would be interested in, but I have studied with them myself. So, tell me what you think. Why are these people in our community? They're not theologically able. They've got watched that. Like, you pick up a piece of their literature and you have to go back and ask them what this, why some of, like, the stuff in your thing is not theologically correct. And they run and they say, I said to one bloke, look, you're, going, you're theologically abusing me. And he, and he was troubled with that in the sense of, my gosh, could I get in trouble? Well, you can. If you're out there and you're supposed to be spreading the gospel of good news and being a good, you know, 
contribution to the community is in a um, theological or Christian way and you're not even prepared to listen to the public when they come up to you, then you should be accountable for negligence, theological negligence. You not just can't go out there and make a presence of yourself and not represent properly and debatably what you're out there pushing onto the public. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. I'll leave the link to Robert's channel. Bye for now.